While we are traveling, you'll have an unusual opportunity to see an adjunct to your memory, something that was always with you. Its intricacy, its beauty, have that forever. Welcome to In an Instant. My name is Ben, and today we're here in the lovely Hudson Valley of New York, shooting for a project I've been working on for the better part of a year. I've been scaling this region, discovering and capturing the iconographic roadside signage and structures that contributed to defining our vision of America in the 50s and 60s. In this video, we're gonna shoot around, we're gonna talk about the project, talk about shooting projects on instant film, and why these delicious metal subjects are so important to me, aka yours truly, aka that dude. Let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. We are currently here outside the absolutely iconic Starlight Motel in Kerhonkson, New York. Uh, I mean, what a subject for this. This is preserved just as it was back when it was built in the 60s. And that period of American history was a real boom for design and the fostering of aesthetic in our everyday life. What I'm out here looking for specifically has sort of a hodgepodge of terms. You could call it mid-century modern, googie, a blend of art deco, futurism. It was a design period that made dramatic use of color, shapes, light, uh, especially neon lights, and is generally considered a product of the golden age of modern design. There's something very optimistic about this style. It painted a bright future. It filled our daily environments with color and light, and every piece was unique. While I think culturally the U.S. is slowly beginning to value that again, it really started to fade in the 90s and 2000s. So much of this mid-century architecture and signage was destroyed, and generally we just sort of like lost our way in terms of maintaining beauty in man-made objects. I mean, look at cars in the 90s. Absolute doinkers across the board, where once we were driving works of art, we then lined our streets with hunks of basically garbage, if I'm being honest, even look at these Polaroid cameras. I mean, what the hell happened here? Along with this unfortunate transition, so many signs and storefronts went extinct. These beautiful handcrafted works of art that represented small business owners were deemed unnecessary, a financial nuisance and a burden that just wasn't worth it. In the past, this stuff could be found everywhere, but here in New York, there was huge turnover. When you think of that specific mid-century style, you don't necessarily think of this region. Places like California and the Southwest are sort of known for that, um, had more of it to begin with, and destroyed less of it. So what little remains in the Hudson Valley to me is worth finding and preserving. In terms of this project, I really feel like instant film is the perfect medium for this. I mean, these are places frozen in time, and that's what instant film is. It's moments frozen in time. And there's something about the aesthetic of instant film too, which is so inherently classic, vintage looking, and that's what these things are. They're built in the 50s and 60s. They have those tones, they have those colors, they have those things that instant film really brings out in such a great way. And I think preserving them now the way they are before they're demolished is really an important thing to do because so many of these things will be forgotten and so many of these things already have been forgotten. So finding them as they still stand is kind of a rush because you're like, all right, this could have been demolished yesterday. And so many of them have been. When you're outside poking an instant camera around, it definitely generates a conversation. And I've had a lot of interesting discussions with store owners, motel owners, about why they still maintain the signs, what it takes, uh, and sort of the history of this stuff. Here at the Bear Mountain Bridge Motel, it's a real struggle to keep this beauty around. Neon specifically is so delicate and extremely expensive to maintain, even something like a strong gust of wind can do thousands of dollars in damage. But those who can afford to keep their signs up do so because they represent so much history, often personal history for these family businesses. So much so that I talked to an owner who was offered $150,000 for their sign and turned it down. I mean, I don't know about that one. I mean, that's, that's a lot of scratch. But still, it really shows how important they are as landmarks.
In terms of the tools I'm using, I decided not to worry too much about which film stocks I employed because besides limiting it to color for obvious reasons, I didn't want to really worry about whether I had enough Spectra film one day or maybe I had an Instax film camera on me. All that mattered from the technical side was the medium itself, the act of capturing these subjects on these prints. And I kind of like the variation in formats. I mean, it adds a little spice. Nothing wrong with a little spice, right? Consistency can be a crucial element in projects, but I think the instant film alone was sufficient. Something I also just love about this is it's like a sense of exploration. I mean, you're going out and finding these things. There's no website that's just like, here's all the mid-century modern signage in New York. You really have to do some research and adventuring, and I think that's like a thing I just love doing anyway. So the fact that it's tied to photography, tied to instant film, for me personally, that's just extremely enjoyable those things coming together in a project and seeing those photos together in a collection is extremely rewarding. So uh, I think I'm gonna go for a swim in here. Looks like the water's um, finally getting warm, so. I'm not sure yet where this set of photographs goes. It, it could be a zine. I'm definitely exploring that idea. Right now, it's just an ongoing collection on my website, but even the act of laying that out, pairing shots together, viewing a body of work that you're passionate about, can be the reward unto itself. It's no hidden secret that undertaking a project can really motivate you in a fresh way. It gives you a focus, it gives you a drive, it gives you a mission. That making a one-off photograph doesn't necessarily provide all the time. Especially this one for me, representing the place that I live, representing an era of design that's very influential and important for me. Um, I'm just having a great time collecting these artifacts. And I strongly encourage people who are going deeper into the medium of instant photography and maybe want to expand their scope a little bit to find whatever inspires them and try to discover the narrative around that. I'll definitely keep all you folks abreast of this thing and please let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this one. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and drill that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, projects, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.